Hello, welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear, and I'm uh, here uh, building, and you're watching, and maybe you're building along. Uh, I'm going to throw the Bear Cave moat there in the chat. If you're here and you want to throw your Bear Cave moat in there because you are a subscriber, throw that Bear Cave moat in there. Harold already did. Harold is hosting. Thank you, Harold. Also hosting is uh, Tom Dyke. Dyketacular is hosting the stream as well. Thank you for that, Tom. Appreciate it. I got a random uh, hair there in my way. Uh, Lashbrook is here. Hello, Lashbrook. Welcome. Uh, we're going to get started in a couple minutes. We're working on our Norn, which is courtesy of Lashbrook, who purchased this off my Amazon wish list. We've completed a leg so far. Um, I'm, there's like six more, six or seven more pieces to put on this leg. We've basically completed it. And then we'll do all we did here for the other foot, which we've already built. Uh, so I'm excited to do that. Uh, got a little fuzziness on the edge there of the stream. It should be okay. Once we go smaller, it'll be a lot better. Uh, look a lot better. All right, there's our view count. Sometimes Twitch dashboard doesn't tell you your view count, um, but you know there are people watching, and you're like, I don't have zero. I have more than that. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to get started in a couple minutes, but we'll wait for a few people, see if a few people want to join us. I know that their Saturday night is always a busy evening, and I thank you for spending some time with me. Uh, water slide decals. Oh, from Twisted. Okay. Twisted is doing a. It's been sending me updates of a very cool kit that they've been working on, uh, so I like seeing that. Will Hero X says hi, Pat. I've been meaning to check out one of these for months. I'm excited. Will Hero, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I hope you have a a fun time here in the chat, um, watching the stream. I'm glad you could join us finally. You've been meaning to check it out. This is a great time to do it because we're working on a kind of a, not a unique kit in any way, a new kit. It's new. Um, uh, the This is a 2018. This might be the most, like, the least amount of time between a kit being produced and me building it ever. I don't think I've ever worked on something that came out in the same year that I worked on it. So that's kind of cool. Um, but, uh, we're also doing a real great, as you can see, this is the one, uh, 44 scale. Um, so it's going to be a, a smaller kit, um, and it's going to be a cool kit and there's a lot of details to it. Um, very good colors. Uh, does, you can't, this is worthless. This is, why am I doing this? I just put a thing in there that like, because of the green screen, that is not going to pop at all. Um, this blue should be okay. Uh, even the blue doesn't look that great. So we'll we'll jump to the overhead shot uh, so you can see the cool colors that we've got going here. Let's do that. Great. Banshee, you can see in the, the sides what it looks like. But in the overhead, I love this color. I love this see-through uh, orange. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, this is the real great. So uh, for those of you that... Oh, thank you, Harold, for the cheers. Really appreciate that. Very nice of you. Um... For those of you not familiar, they haven't seen our real grades that we've built in the past. Um, a real grade is, it's in between a high grade and a master grade. Um, black and gold is always a cool color scheme. It's always a good job. It's always a good choice. Um, and these the, these see-through pieces are, are fantastic. Um, so that's, it, it's one of those things where like, I'm, I'm very into what's going on here. Although, like I said, um, Real grades have a lot of smaller pieces that can sometimes be tough for a big finger gentleman like myself. I got I got the thick hands from all of the food that I've consumed in my life. I got the thick, stubby hands. Uh, so some of the finer detail work I do need, you know, to take my time with. Um, but yeah, I am employing the considered style of putting the uh, um, instruction book far as far away from me as possible where I can still read it. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of instruction book, and I apologize for that. But the alternative is that I have it here, and I build here, which is what I like to do. But then my sweaty arms get all over the paper, and that's not good. So we can put this leg aside. We'll put it over here so you can see that as we go. Um, uh, I posted this in anywhere I could where people could read it, but I'll say it here on the stream, and I'll say it a couple times. My next stream after tonight is on Monday. 
on 2 p.m. till 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hello, board. Welcome, board. I'll say it a bunch because I want people to know. Oh, yeah, we have to finish this off. What am I even saying? We're not done with this piece yet. Uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Monday. That's 2 p.m. Eastern Time to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we, we, I will be building again because I'm going to be at um, PAX West. So I won't be able to stream on Thursday or Saturday. Now, I am going to do another stream at some point that weekend. And I'll try to give warning. I, I got to kind of figure out my schedule. Um, my thinking is I might do that like uh, on Friday in between the panel, uh, in between our booth shutting down and uh, the panel that I have. So I'm thinking about that I might do that then. That's kind of a like, oops, I took two of these off by mistake. I've done that a couple times where... I think I'm pulling the right one, but I'm pulling the wrong number. Um, so I got to put that in the box so I don't lose it. And then I'll be like, where's this piece I need? And then I'll look in the box. Um, and then we need D. Uh, I got to the Galactic Hub in No Man's Sky. Congratulations, Mr. Bob. That rules. Um, I played very little of No Man's Sky. I played on PC. I played um, some of it. Uh, certainly not enough to have a real solid opinion, but also the fact that I didn't put a lot of time into it should also count as an opinion. Should be a good indication. But yeah, so next week, uh, originally I was planning on streaming from my apartment uh, on Wednesday. I was going to do a Wednesday stream. I am still going to be streaming on Wednesday, but not on this account. I'm doing something cool on Wednesday. Um, I'm waiting for to see if they're going to announce that. Um, so I, uh, I right now have, uh, no plans to announce yet, but I am doing a live stream on Wednesday. Um, so that's going to be fun. It won't be on this channel, but I will host it on this channel for folks that don't like to watch other places. If you want to chat with this chat, um, in the afternoon, I don't know the exact time, but I will be doing that. Uh, the new update has really helped me sink a uh, bunch more time in the game. I've heard that last book. I mean, I've heard that people like the changes that were made to No Man's Sky. Um, it just still hasn't... I don't have the urge to go and check it out. All right, so this is going to go... Like this. Um, as always, when I'm dealing with new information like this, I... I do my best to kind of figure things out as we go, and then it makes it a lot easier when it's time to do it on the other leg. So the other leg will be a lot faster than this leg. Um, I have not done anything from Gun uh, Unicorn Gundam before. So that's also like I'm learning what these Gundam kind of feel like. Like I know what they look like, but I've never built them before, so I'm not really sure what they feel like. So this is a good chance for me to learn that. Okay, it goes on like that. And now these are layered and all that. So I'm learning that as we go. If I do another one from Unicorn, I'll know way better what's going on. Uh, pulled about 40 hours in, and that was enough for me. Or 70, I should say. It said 40. Yeah, well, hey, uh, bored. Uh, 70 hours is enough of a video game. If someone told me, you only put 70 hours into that game, I would respond, eat a butt, and not in a good way. Eat a bad butt. Eat. Yes, I would tell someone, if they were like, you only put 70 hours into that game, my response would be for them to go eat a bad butt. Uh, because, come on. Like, that's a lot of time. I have put more than that into games. Uh, Fallout New Vegas... I believe I have put over 200... Uh, ah, God damn it! Um, there is a fly that is now trapped in my room. I tried to get rid of it. Uh, and it flew underneath my glasses, which is hilarious. I, um... That's very funny. God damn it. Um... Well, what was I doing? I was pulling out an F piece. F-17. What the fuck? Anyway... I've put, oh, well over 200 hours into, uh, um, 
Uh, yeah, I hate flies too, Bored. There's just one in the apartment, and I didn't know it got into the bedroom, and now it probably can't get out because I have closed every way for it to get out so that sound doesn't travel in while I'm doing this shit. Uh, anyway, um, I, yeah, I put over 200 hours into No Man's, into not No Man's Sky, into Fallout New Vegas because it's a fantastic game that I really, really love. Um, so I can understand putting a lot of hours into games. I've also played games for like an hour and been like, that's a great game. Cause you don't have to put in hundreds of hours to, into a game. You can just put in some hours into a game and that's okay. I got no problem with that. Never have, never will have a problem with that. There's sometimes where I'm like, oh, I really like that game. I'm bummed you didn't like it. Like, I felt that way before, but it's not my job to tell people to like or not like something. I feel like I missed a piece, and I'm going to go back. Yes. As far I, I... This does not look right. This looks like I didn't add a piece that I should have added. So I'm going to go back and figure out what I did wrong there. Um, so I ended that, I ended that. I feel like I didn't add, I feel like I added D30, and then I added, I added those two. I did not add F14. F14 needs to get added. I think that's what this is. Let me see. I am right. There was a piece that I did not add. It just looked wrong. It looked unfinished, right? Like this looks, like this looks unfinished, because it is unfinished, because I got to put this piece on. There we go. Um, and then, so this goes, make sure the curve is right. That was unfinished. Okay. Booyaka. You don't even see that piece now. All right. Well, now I, now we're done with this leg. Finally. And we can work to the other leg. Um, my longest is about 300 plus hours into Skyrim. I ran a lot of graphic and adventure mods, so it was not all original content. Yeah, I'm in the same way with New Vegas. I mean, New Vegas and also Fallout 4. I did a, I did a lot of modding in Fallout 4. Um, sank 300, 3,000 hours into Guild Wars and all its expansions. Skyrim is probably the most played game. Now, I also don't know how many hours I put into Hearthstone, but I played, I started like, six or seven months into Hearthstone's life and played it up until sometime this year. I'm not really playing much now. I didn't buy new expansion. I didn't buy any cards. The last the expansion before, I think, is probably my last one. Um, but I did put a lot of time into that game over the years, and I don't regret it. I'm not, like, bummed about it. I just, just wasn't interested in in new decks. I'm still watching people play because I still enjoy the people. Um, I follow two streamers still um, who I watch live on occasion but mostly watch their YouTube content. I'm still watching um, uh, Brian Kibler and I'm still watching um, uh, Firebat. And I enjoy their content. Um, their videos. Kibler's doing like two videos a day right now because he was tra unfortunately traveling when the when the new uh, content came out. So he didn't get to really benefit from it being out. Uh, so I've been watching a bunch of videos of them playing stuff. Yeah, and let's not get into MMOs, right? Like, I don't know how many hours I put into World of Warcraft, but I put hours into World of Warcraft. Uh, but like, that's like, yeah, um, you know, some really was Pokemon Diamond. I put I've put some hours into Pokemon games. Pokemon Sun Moon. I put a lot of hours into. Um, eventually, was just like because it's one of the first. It's actually the first Pokemon game um, that I played on a handheld. It's not including emulators where I got them all, where I caught them all because the um, the trading worked so well that you know you could put things up for grabs and be like. I'm looking to buy this um, that I was able to, or I'm looking to trade this for this. I was able to catch them all and fill out my Pokedex. Um, plus, because, uh, you know, sometimes people would trade you things that weren't part of the, that were part of the national decks, which you didn't have in uh, Sun Moon. 
So I put a lot of time into Pokemon games. A heck of a lot of time. Alright, so... This goes like this. This goes like this. Alright. So we're going to do what we did uh, on Thursday with the leg and just do the other leg. Pretty straightforward. Pretty easy. Just building stuff. I'm going to make it so we can see what's going on. Uh... At some point, I could claim some of my MMO hours were job training. Uh, yeah, mine was... Um, did, I don't know if I've... I, I must have talked about my uh, World of Warcraft days, but I'll, I'll... For those of you that didn't hear it, and if you didn't hear it before, I apologize, but you can only stream and talk for so long before you start repeating yourself. Uh, try not to be terrible about that. But um, anyway, so... My experience with World of Warcraft was very unique. Because I knew everyone but three people in my guild. Now, my guild was only maybe 30 people at most. But still, I knew everybody except a couple people that were friends from another MMO, from like a bunch of MMOs with a guy that I knew. He had like been like, hey, my friends need a guild. Could they join our guild? But everybody else knew each other. We were all like New York comedy folks. Um, and because most of us had gaming laptops we were able to play together. Um, not all of us, but a lot of us would sometimes like run around. This was pre-raiding days. This is early Warcraft. We would like group up, guild up, and then like run around and do dumb stuff like run into Duskwood and just try to murder rogues uh, and like corpse, you know, hunt different people and like get into mischief. Uh, we would do a bunch of dumb stuff and it was really fun. But it was, I mean, I had the most fun because um, we knew each other. Now, the major problem with that was because it was comedians, um, a lot of us had day jobs and then played at night when we were home for a day job and not like out like doing shows or at rehearsals or anything. But I work at night and I've worked at night the entire time I lived in New York. So I would, on my off nights, I would play. But on the nights that I was you know i would most nights i'd be working so i would play a lot during the day and eventually i let my rogue kind of go and my main became a druid because i could kind of you know heal myself a bit and like solo e more easily um but that, that was most of my time uh, in world of warcraft was like with a guild of people i knew and it was pretty cool um Oh, yeah, I would go Owlkin, certainly. Uh, I mean, I, honestly, I was a bear a lot, or like a panther, you know. I like a good panther. Uh, you know, run, increase your run speed, you know. you got Sometimes you got to increase that run speed. And G1, G21. Um, but, yeah, I really, really enjoyed my time in World of Warcraft with my guild. And then one of the founders of our guild got way too into Warcraft. And by way too into Warcraft, I mean, like, they got too into, like, raiding and stuff. And so they, like, abandoned our guild to go, like, become, like, a raider and, like, join, like, a guild that, like, did stuff. And our guild was never going to do anything. Our guild barely did, like, anything. It was awesome because that was not what I was there for. I was not there to do stuff. I was there to... um to hang out and to like kill stuff and finish quests. But I was never like there to like raid dungeons. That was not my, that was not my thing. And eventually it died out because people got bored. Um, and I guess at one point, really honestly, things were done because uh, everyone got into poker. Tech sold them. And our uh, night that we could go and play, uh, the guy that led us into the space that we were playing in, where a bunch of people bring their laptops and play, decided he was going to start doing, uh, he was going to start playing uh, uh, poker that night. And so a bunch of people got really into Texas Hold'em. And that was fine. And I d did enjoy that because I'm all about the community. I raided by the end of kind of, I was fourth geared combat rogue on my server. 
Wow. Yeah, I was never about that life. That was not my intent. That was not my interest. I liked solo play. I liked goofing around with friends. Um, I had like a had a bit of a twink character that I like. Spent real money and you know got a gold farmer to give me money and you know paid paid a gold farmer to give me money and like I had a character that like did a bunch of dumb shit and ran around and did a little bit of stuff but like. I was never, I was never out to like be the very best or anything like that. Never really interested in raiding. No problem with people who do and did. The only problem I, I think I had was I was mad at my friend for leaving our fun good time guild to go to a quote unquote real guild. Like that, I was, I was miffed for a very long time about that. Uh, but yeah, because he just, you know. Stopped being fun and started being like taking it seriously. And I was like, oh no, dude, don't do that. You can't go full serious about this. Uh, I had to retire rating because of high school. Yeah, that'll, night school. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, we kicked out all the toxic people. We were a lot worse at rating, but it was more fun. I mean, that's huge, Mr. Bob. I mean, that's the reason why I played so much WoW, honestly. Like, I like the world of... I, I like Warcraft 3 a lot. I had a great time with Warcraft 3. I like the world. I like the I like Diablo. I like that kind of thing. I liked having fun characters that were silly and a good time. Like, that was all very fun for me. But honestly and, and earnestly, my favorite parts of, of Warcraft were like, my friends like hanging hanging out with my friends and like doing dumb stuff that's why i played poker was because that's where my friend group was i got to play things i got to hang out with my friends from comedy but never talk about comedy because we almost never we would occasionally like gossip and bullshit but we it was never serious we like would talk about other things uh that's why i would go to my friend terry's place to play halo i don't know if you know this but i'm not good at shooters and i don't really like them. I, I like some shooters. Um, but uh, I am predominantly not interested in in most, most if not all, shooters. Uh, but I didn't care that I was the worst player uh, at uh, in Halo. Because to me, I was way more interested in hanging out and chatting and seeing my friends and like being silly and uh, and going to my friend Terry's place and ordering Thai food and playing Halo. And then even when Halo 2 came out and suddenly we weren't um, playing in his apartment as much, which sucked. Uh, I would still sometimes go to people's places and like play with them while we were all playing together. Instead of playing from my apartment. Halo is a lot better with people than you know. Yes. Um, I mean, the original Halo, so, so Terry set up, Terry Jin, uh, who is a fantastic human, wonderful dude, um, is, I believe, retired from comedy, although he was very, very funny, uh, just naturally funny guy, great guitar player, just, just all around good people. Terry had an enormous television. It was like a 44 inch plasma when Halo came out. So it was huge. So when you divided it by four, everyone's screen was still very big. Like, it, you could play four-player without any problems. It was never a problem to do four-player at Terry's Enormous Television. And then he had a, another Xbox that a friend of mine had bought and left at Terry's place on purpose for this that we would link to with an Ethernet cable to a projector that would do four people on a wall. And that projector was good enough that it was, like, not as great as the television, but, like, still doable. And so we would do four on four. And then sometimes we'd have enough people that we'd have to rotate folks in and rotate them out. Uh, and it was awesome. And then one time a guy that lived near Terry brought his Xbox and his TV. And we linked that together, too. And we had two people playing on that because it was, like, a 13-inch television. Um... It was a huge TV. 
it was a ju- it was literally an enormous television um and it was awesome to play halo like that because you were with your friends and you were like you know doing team slayer or you were doing capture the flag we did a lot of capture the flag we did a lot of a lot a lot a lot of capture the flag that was our preferred game method because you could play because people could play it the way that they felt comfortable playing it right like um i might not have been the best shooter but i was very good with vehicles and sometimes i was pretty sneaky and i could like find a way in or i would like i wasn't really great at shooting but i was good enough with a shotgun to defend the base uh, you know, with a shotgun blast. Uh, so, like, yeah, we did a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of Capture the Flag in those days. And it was very good times. A very real and earnest fondness for that time. And it was, like, it was mostly just, like, yeah, like I said, just trying to be with people and, like, hang out and uh, and spend time with people I liked but not talking about the things we were all obsessed with, like, just like being real people. It was very cool. Um, oh. Uh, I don't remember how much it weighed, but it was huge and big. It was a very big television, as you can imagine. Uh, fun fact, the owner of that television... Or not television. The owner of the Xbox that was hooked up to the projector in the bedroom is character actor Ptolemy Slocum, who many people might know... Uh, you'll, you'll rec- you don't know his name, but you recognize his face. He is one of the uh, technicians in Westworld. He's the white technician guy in Westworld. And he's been in a bunch of stuff. He was in The Sopranos. It's like a kind of a big minor character whose name I can't remember. He's done a bunch of acting. He's one of those like people that you don't know, but you do know. He's been in a bunch of commercials and stuff. Tommy is, a, is a, also a real good dude. Besides being a great actor. Um, trying to get this thing lined up right. I can't remember how it goes from the, from Thursday, but I think I just got it. The problem we had on Thursday with this piece, I remember, is that I had the wrong one, and so I was doing it very wrong, and now I'm doing it very right. Uh, Wardall launching? Oh yeah, sure. You know all that dumb stuff, all the dumb stuff you could do with a with a warthog, definitely. Um. All right, so that went on that, like that. Uh, people hated my plasma grade skills in Halo 1. Uh, <laughs> would need them to get up. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was never great at sticky. Um, you know, I was actually, I was good with a shotgun because it's hard not to be good with a shotgun, but especially if you kind of know where, where to aim it. And I was really good uh, with, well, I was also pretty good with sticky grenades, yeah. I, I could figure out where it needed to go and kind of and kind of mess with people. I played a lot of Halo 1. I was never good. I was always trying to not be the worst at it. That was my goalpost, was don't be the worst player today. And there were a few people that played that were worse than me. So that was good. Um, oh, I remember... I was like, why didn't I think about Ptolemy before? Ptolemy was on, Kurt Braunholer was on uh, Jonah Ray's podcast and mentioned Ptolemy talking about the Neutrino video projects. That's a whole lot of specific things for nobody but me. So don't worry about any of that. Um, all right. So, yeah, we're working on our leg again. Pretty basic, pretty easy stuff. Um, pretty straightforward right now. I do like how these rockets are, this rocket leg piece is attached. How it, like, it has a lot of movement and the shielding for it, like the blast shielding to focus where it goes. I think that's very cool. Has a cool element to this leg. All right, so now we're building off of it. So we need B1. More of this. B1. We already know what that is. It's over here. And we can just touch there. Uh, today, for during my dinner, I watched uh, Cells at Work, the new episode of Cells at Work. It was good. It was um, 
It was focusing on the red blood cell. I like the red blood cell. She's very fun. Um, and kind of the white blood cell was there. And then we're setting up that the next episode is going to be about the killer T-cell, who is like, honestly, my least favorite character. So I was like, oh, okay. But maybe I'll appreciate him more when they have an episode that focuses on him. But I doubt it, because I don't really like that character. All right, so we got to put this on here. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll appreciate uh, the Killer T Cell more tomorrow or next week when I watch it. Whenever I watch that, I guess what I should probably do is get on Wi-Fi and down like at some throughout the weekend and like download all the videos I want to watch on the Crunchyroll onto my um, iPad Touch. And then have like a few episodes banked for like flights and stuff. Um, or just like sitting around. Because I don't know. The Airbnb I'm staying at has Wi-Fi. But I have no idea how good it is. And also because I'm like sleeping in the living room. I'm like are there going to be people around? Am I going to have like privacy? Is it just a place to really sleep? Like not that uh, during my weekend I'm ever going to really be in the Airbnb. Except to sleep in. But um uh, the Airbnb I'm staying at, I'm like, you know, I'm not planning on spending a lot of time there, because uh, wh why would I? But Thursday night, I don't really have plans right now, so I originally planned to have, spend a little time there, but I don't know. H5, H6. That was my main goal for Thursday when I get out there, is do all the prep work, set everything up, get everything ready for for packs, get my shirts there because I have to pick shirts up from uh, Samantha Kalman, uh, received our shirts for Pax West so I have to pick those up from her uh, very nice of her to do that um, but yeah, I have to get like shirts and I have to get like um, our booth set up and all that and then go go to my Airbnb check into my Airbnb and then come back and do more stuff because I don't really, yeah. And then eventually just crash. All right, so just goes like this to here and to Um, let's see here. Sorry. I got sidetracked and now I'm like, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I'm doing this part. Just putting this on. That goes on like this. And then this top piece goes into that. I'll figure this out eventually. All right. So that goes on there. I know that part. I'll just do that while I'm doing this. Uh... But yeah, uh, I'm excited um, for uh, for Pax West. I didn't watch any other anime since then. I, I got caught up on um, on making it, which I still recommend. I think it's a fantastic show. I think it's really, really solid, and I do recommend that people check it out if you haven't watched it yet. If it's available in your area, um, making it is a fantastic television program. Um. It's one of the only things I'm watching on television right now. This is just really good. And solid. Alright, so then this piece over here. Great, figure this out. Hooray. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yes! Caught that bug, fucker. Look, I don't I don't um I don't often celebrate death, but uh that thing sucked. I'm glad that it's gone. Now it's not going to bother me anymore. So, yeah. Yes. I just murdered a living creature on stream, off stream, on stream. You didn't have to watch it, but it happened. Also, I'm going to tell you that flies been bothering me all goddamn day. So, 
That's a victory. I'm annoyed by flies, and I hate mosquitoes. If I can crush them, I will. Um, my only anime update is I'm back on Yu Yu Hakusho. I didn't really care for the Senui arc, but this Demon World stuff is interesting. Far. Oh no, that arc isn't great. It is not great at all. Um, that's a very not great arc. It's the worst shit in the show. Other than like when you're watching the re if you're watching it like again and you're like because the first time I think all of the detective stuff the learning the ropes and like him being dead and trying to get back into a body stuff I think that's really fun but on second viewing I was like oh this is longer than I remember uh, but yes um, the Demon World stuff uh, is I think really interesting and the, the tournament stuff that's coming is there's tournament stuff coming. Sorry for spoilers. There's tournament stuff coming, and it's great. Um, uh, I have like five anime I want to watch, but I always have to find it hard to pay attention. Uh, unless it's My Hero Academia. Yeah, I mean, that can be tough. You you know, like, I have certainly started things and never finished it. Um, Blood Block Brigade is one that comes to mind. I like that show. I'm just sometimes not in the mood for it and so then i don't watch it um but that happens certainly that happens all the time to everybody uh it's hard to just focus on one thing there's so many things out there uh i saw episode titles so i know interested to see what the context for karama related one is yeah um mr bob says i may have bought a handled vacuum for this reason uh, destroy bugs i understand sometimes you got to um, there's some mosquitoes about, and I want the weather to get cooler so they go away, but right now they're out and about. It's been mostly fine, but, you know, it happens. I went for a long walk today, and it was pretty great, y'all. Gotta say, long walks, sometimes real good. Now, was the reason I was going on a long walk to go to a, uh, to log into a, um, a raid so that I can uh, increase the number of raids I need to do for a quest I have in Pokemon Go? Yes. But it was also good to get out of the, get out and walk around. Uh, I, I did have a less than stellar motive, but hey, you know, I'm trying to get all these raids in because I'm not a raider. But also, Pro tip, if you're a Pokemon Go person and you get a quest that's like battle in three raids and it doesn't say win a raid, it just says battle in one, all you have to do is hit battle and it counts. You can then quit and you don't have to do it. So it's not a Pokemon you need to capture or it's one that's way too tough for you to beat and doesn't look like enough people are going to be there to play, uh, then you could just quit out of it and it counts for your goals, which is great. I'm on a, doing a bunch of quests trying to get a Mew. So, you know, I'm going to take every advantage I can. I want that Mew. Also, I wanted, I wanted to get... Uh, I added too many friends on Pokemon Go. And now I, I feel bad because I don't have gifts to send them. Um, so I'm going to probably decrease the number of friends I have on there. Uh, I did have a quest where it was like one of them was like add three more friends and so I put my name out on uh, on uh, Twitter and a bunch of people um, added me some people that were definitely bots like I now have a few people in Japan who I definitely don't know but then I also have a couple people I do know and I'm like oh I feel bad I can't send them gifts because I don't have them to send I don't know. That's some, there's some Pokemon Go talk for you. Um, let's see. I think I, on Thursday, I definitely... I think on Thursday I talked about um, how uh, there was some... There was definitely plenty of action in this week's... Um, I'm going to snap this on, but I can't remember how it snaps on. It does snap on, though. Um, 
the song right? Um, yeah, I put that on right. Okay. Um, that um, there that lately there hadn't been enough action in the action harem show that I had been watching, uh, which is uh, how not to summon a demon lord. And on Thursday there was more action in this episode. There was a lot of action, so I was happy about that. There was also some stuff I didn't really like, but whatever, that happens too. Try doing this first. Um, but yeah, overall, that show is gr it's still fine. It's just fine. Like, I wish I didn't like this genre because I haven't seen one that isn't isn't horny. I think Dog Days. I think Dog Days is literally the only one. And even then, eventually, by like series three, they like they had a thing where kids could be adult versions and then one of them felt weird about that so I was like even that show did it eventually uh, I've talked about dog days before that show is stupid but I really liked it it's basically the idea there's an animal planet where they're like cat girls and dog boys and all kinds of squirrels and all kinds of stuff all kinds of a animal people um, and they solve all of their conflicts with like sports competitions um, that are warlike, but also kind of like American gladiators like, uh, and you could have champions and some people called for champions from another world. And then one is like an eight year old who's like very athletic. He's like a gold medal. He's like gold medal caliber, um, Olympiad, uh, who happens to be like eight years old adventure. And so he gets brought in and people are like, um, would you be down for this? And he's like, Yes. And then he's later his friends show up and it's like it's a fine show. There's conflict and there's like there's like some rough parts that are like tough and sad, but for the most part it's a very light show. Um and it is like probably the only non-horny example of uh a show that like the you know the that genre of go to another world anim and be overpowered in that other world anime. So, I saw a spot. But like I said, there is a part where it gets a little etchy. Because of course it had it had to eventually. Couldn't be pure forever. Do, 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 do. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've been watching. That's probably not. I think that, that's probably it. Um, Yuna is still very fun. I like that show. Even even when they f do episodes focused on the fucking ninja, who's my least favorite. I'm, I think I'm just done with that, with that character archetype. The, like, holier-than-thou Puritan... But is probably also Sundere character. I'm just kind of not into it. Uh, um, now I kind of want to watch some random. Uh, uh, episodes of Yu Yaku Show. I really like that show a lot. It's one of my favorite shows. Whoop. That flew. That wasn't good. Uh, Alright. Hold on tight, y'all. A piece flew off as I was snapping pieces together. And I can see where it is, but I can't reach it, reach it. So, I'll be right back in one second. I'm going to go to this. Back, my headset's back on, and hello, I'm back. Found the piece that flew away. Thank you for waiting. I'm gonna trim this down and try to, oof, reattach it. 
Sorry about that, y'all. At least it flew into place and I could see where it landed. It's not like missing. Um, did it have a set order of when that was supposed to go? Nope, that means it should snap back on pretty easily. It did, great. All right, so now we're going to work on the piece that goes over onto this. Do that for a little bit, and then we'll uh, take a break in a little bit and do some, you know, ad, ad reads and all that. Um, but right now I can uh, just continue building. I'm good center, right? Okay, great. Um, but yeah, what was this thing? Oh, yeah. Now I kind of, maybe tonight, maybe my cool down post uh, stream where I just kind of chill out and don't really pay attention. Maybe I will go and watch some random Yu Yu show on Crunchyroll. Uh, I haven't said this in a while. It might, might not have said it all this month. So I will say um, I have a gifted Crunchyroll account uh, because I have a friend who works for Verve, VRV. Um, and he knows that I talk about anime a lot. So he hooked me up with a year long membership to that, which includes Funimation and crunchy roll and a bunch of other things i use the current because i but because of the account i can just use i still use crunchy roll site because i think the subtitles are better on that site and it loads a little bit better than uh verve not everyone can not everyone has verve i think verve is us only um but i have it they are not a sponsor per se but they did uh did grant me that and then theoretically Possibly, I'm going to do a panel for them at a convention this year uh, for Verve. I might host a panel of theirs, which will be exciting. Um, look out on my Twitter on Friday, probably on Friday. Um, I am going to... Uh, um, yeah, on Friday, um, I will tweet out something, a video, quick video, uh, at Oni's booth. Oni has like a half booth with another company at PAX West because they're Portland based. So they just pop up for that. Um, so I, they have, they're announcing something at PAX or right before PAX. They'll have something for sale at PAX that is pretty unique and, uh, I can't spoil it. But I'm going to tell you this. There are some video game fans that are going to be very excited about this property. It is a video game property that they are doing a comic for. Um, and I think people are going to be fucking jazzed about that. I don't know if it's leaked yet, but I'm not going to be the one to leak it. But I'm going to say that if you're at PAX West, you should stop by the Oni booth. Because they're going to have something pretty cool. And uh, I'll probably do a quick video of that just on my phone. I'm going to throw my bear cave emote in there because uh, chat has gone quiet. So let's throw that bear cave emote in there uh, just to encourage people to throw a bear cave emote in there. Get some chatters chatting. It's time to talk. See what's up. If there's anything you want to chat about, Flashbook threw that in there. Once again, uh, I'll mention it in a minute. This was uh, this kit was purchased by Lashbrook, which we really appreciate. Um uh, the link to the Amazon wish list is in the show description for those of you watching on YouTube later. Uh, and then for everybody else, well, they can just uh, follow the link when I post it in a little bit. That snaps into place. This goes like this. Yep. But yeah, I am um, excited to uh, go out to... Uh, Seattle next week. It should be fun. I'm leaving on Thursday, very early in the morning, so technically Wednesday night. So I'll do a stream. As I said, I'm going to do a stream on Monday afternoon. Then I'll pack up uh, the equipment for um, my panels and uh, be ready to go. What anime have you rewatched uh, most, Pat? I feel like I revisit both Death Note every few months because it's good first bit of Death Note background for me. So, uh, Road, uh, Road Xerox. Um, I think the thing I go back to, well, so 
just on in the background to whatever is um is a pretty modern anime that I, I put on now and again when I just want to have something just on in the background and I don't really kind of care what it is. Uh, I find myself putting um, the irregular at magic school. It is um, it is one of those like overpowered main character uh, shows, but it, it treats magic like almost like another branch of science and math, and I'm and that's interesting to me. Uh, and like using technology to further magic while you use magic to further everyday life. Um, and it's just kind of, it's just kind of cool to watch a dude just be real good at being a badass, uh, and not getting, kind of not giving a fuck. Uh, so I kind of throw that on a lot when I'm just doing whatever and just kind of look over at it. But my, it's time to watch this show again. Number one is... Either, uh, as Lashbrook said, Cowboy Bebop. I've watched that series dozens and dozens and dozens of times. But uh, Dragon Ball. The original Dragon Ball VHS tapes, my, which were fan subs. Um, I owned the official release of the first, like, 13 of Dragon Ball. Like, the first arc of Dragon Ball. First whatever. Whatever the arc was. I, I have the first that. I had that. Uh, the official, like, subtitled version of that and the dub of that. And then everything else was fan subbed for for years, but I watched the I watched that series a lot. And there's a lot of it, but I, you know, watched it over and over again. And the tournament arc, the, the, the several tournaments, are, be it Jackie, you know, uh, uh, the the first one where Master Roshi is in disguise because. You know, his kid, his students are so powerful. No one else in that tournament could come close, but he wants them to know what the feat is so that they will grow uh, and, and, and become more. Uh, that tournament's great. The Tien, the tournament with Tien is great. Uh, the tournament fight with uh, Piccolo and Piccolo Jr. are both great. Um, I really love all the tournament arcs in Dragon Ball. Uh, and I love the goofy adventure stuff too. Red Rune Army stuff like is long, but I, I think is pretty. It's still pretty cool. Uh, I would really like to watch Dragon Ball Z Kai, but not being on stream service sticks. I understand, Road. Uh, I hear you. Um, uh, I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I watched. Dragon Ball Z, I watched a lot of it on television. And, of course, like, the Heavens Tournament, which was uh, originally not dubbed. Um, I watched the that filler. Uh, a lot of it on fan subs. I can remember a whole lot of uh, commercials for McDonald's. Apparently, McDonald's aired commercials a lot during... Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, because I saw a lot of commercials for that. I remember a lot of commercials for, um, because I thought it was always fun. Like some, some fan subbers would, uh, would like give them like the tail end. And every once in a while, someone would like and keep the commercials in if they taped it off television. I always thought that was kind of fun. So you would see a little bit of like Tony the Tiger playing soccer, but this Tony the Tiger is like, you know, Japanese, and you're like, oh, that that's cool and weird. That's a weird, cool thing. Um, I don't know. That always stuck out. That always stuck out to me. Did I put these on wrong? No, it goes on. That's right. Now I remember. That piece is weird. Ish. Um, but yeah, I always had a, a soft spot in my heart for, for Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. I can go back to that show anytime. Uh, dubs or subs. Um, so, I mean, obviously the Kai stuff makes things easier, but like, I don't know the snake way stuff with like the snake ladies and the races and all that filler, um, with the home for infinite loser stuff, like, you know, the hell stuff, not the though. But all that, all that filler, like, I don't know. I also like that filler, too. I mean, there's some Dragon... Believe me, there's some Dragon Ball Z filler that is not good. Um, that's real not good. Like, don't get me wrong. 
But some of it was fun. I remember I had a good time with some of it. Um, okay, so we need F12. Is there an F11? F F12 is one of the pieces that I uh, got out by mistake, so I have to pull that out here. That's by mistake. That's that's F11, and then F12 there, and then two Ds. Goes on like this side. And then I need D5 and D34. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just always had a good time with, with Dragon Ball. And then Dragon Ball Z. I've never re I've never rewatched a single chapter of GT. I've watched it all. I even watched the movie, the GT movie with uh, Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr. Uh, the real, the real, the last end of the show for, for years, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I've never done a GT rewatch. I like Teo showing up during the Cell games and running to go on. Yes! Uh, Mercenary Tao showing up uh, and then being like, oh, you, you can't be Goku. And he's like, I'm not Goku. I'm his son. Uh, there is something very fun about when, when Goku and Gohan are like, we're just going to hang out as Super Saiyans and, like, live in this space as Super Saiyans. Uh, considering how leg it was a legendary thing, how there's, like, only one of them. Like, Brawly's the only one ever. Uh, and the fact that, like, they're just like, yeah, we're just going to do it. We're just going to hang out. We're just going to be chill about being Super Saiyans. Always, I always thought that was pretty fun. Dumb stuff. There's some good Gohan filler. Um, I mean, I was talking the other day about uh, Dragon Ball Z filler. There's Gohan filler of like a lot of like Kim like toughening up, like the 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 period, the time jump where you don't see him, and then he comes back and he's like way more confident of a kid. Like that stuff is good. Uh, honestly, the um, Goku Vegeta, the Majin Vegeta Goku fight is the best filler because that's like half a page in the manga and they really like um they really made that a thing and really spent time with it and i always thought that was cool that's probably my favorite of the filler if i could if i could claim to really like any filler that's probably that all right so what am i doing wrong here there it is. Did it right. Okay. All right. We're almost done with this leg. Uh, is the thing where Bardock went super canon? I have no idea what, if which, like, because I don't know if the Bardock movie is canon or not. Like, I don't know. Like, I have no idea what Bardock stuff is canon and what Bardock stuff isn't. Never been clear on that. Um, yeah, I've never really investigated what that stuff is, so I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, who is it? Oh, um, we're talking about how, uh, in Dragon Ball, um, Super, uh, Lunch, or Launch, isn't in the show, because apparently Akira Toriyama, like, forgot about her, um, because she shows up, like, very briefly in the uh, the end of what speaking of filler stuff that wasn't in the manga in the manga there's like two characters that go for the final um, we gotta kill boo spirit ball spirit bomb I should say uh, the final spirit bomb isn't that many characters and they kind of you know they they bring back like lots of old school characters in that which is pretty cool um, but uh I remember Launch is like a delivery person or a truck driver or something. And I thought that was pretty cool. They included her. But yeah, she's not in Super because he was like, oh yeah, that character. Uh, 
Um, do, 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 do. Okay, so yeah, so we gotta finish these pieces off. Gotta put this on like, oh, gotta trim off the excess here. Oops. We'll take a break in just a moment and I'll do my, uh, my ad reads, talk about the ways that you can support the channel if you're not already. Yada, 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 all that stuff. In a moment, we'll do that. I'm just going to finish this up here. And then we will have finished this leg. Put that in there. Leg completed. All right. We did it. So that's the leg. We've got two legs done. All right. Mr. Bob, I'll get to that in a minute or two. Hello. First and foremost, thank you for watching. If you're watching this live, if you're watching later on the stream, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, it's awesome. Thank you. Um, number one, that's that. Two, if you're not subscribing and you're interested in doing that, you can use your Twitch coin from Twitch Prime. You can spend $5. The money I make from that goes to me buying more model kits. So that's one way you can support the channel. Um, uh, if you're not subscribing, you don't think you're going to anyway, at the very least, follow me uh, here so that you can and, and turn your notifications on so that you get notice when I, um, when I uh, go live and you can follow along there. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, that's a, a thing that you can do. Uh, it is a way to support me. Um, I just, you know, it's it's one way you can you can support the channel and do all that is to watch live when I go live. Uh, we just uh, had a uh, road just uh, followed me on Twitch, which was very nice. I just got that notification. Thank you for that. Another way you can do it is if you don't want to go through Amazon and Twitch and all that by paying them a monthly thing, uh, you can jump into uh, my Patreon. I got a Patreon. Um, one dollar a month, you get a Q and A video that only uh, patron backers get. Uh, for five dollars a month, you get videos. I'll put this video up a, like an hour from now when it's done uh, after the stream, and then any videos I make outside of that tomorrow, I'll put the video that I'm going to be putting on online on Monday. Will go to subscribers a day only five dollars, ten dollars. I occasionally put up polls, and you can vote on kits that I'm going to build. Uh, the next this kit and the next kit. I just did as, as I was doing um, because uh, the kid I'm building after this is the kid I wanted to build for a long time. So I'm doing that. Uh, you could be like Lashbrook and buy me a kit that I can build on stream. Lashbrook uh, bought this kit off my Amazon wish list and was one of the people that encouraged me to add it to my wish list in the first place, which I'm always willing to do. If it's, it, I, I don't want to build a kit that I'm not interested in, but if you find a Lego set or... Uh, a Gundam or another model kit that you think would be cool for me to build on stream, uh, you can always uh, send me a tweet about that or a message here in the comments, link to me in the comments. Go, hey, you should put this on your wish list. And if it's something that I think would be interesting, I'll put it on there. And then you could buy it and I could build it. Uh, we had someone talk about uh, Zoids a while back. I put some Zoids up, never saw any activity there. They are very expensive. So, uh, yeah, uh, Lashbrook, you were one of the people that was like, oh, you should put this on your wish list when it comes out. Uh, because I think the you mentioned it, it wasn't actually available when you mentioned it. So I put it up once it was. Um, yeah, you're one of the people that was like, oh, you should get this. Because a few of you were like, hey, here's some new kits that are coming out. To have you added those? Uh, I also have my coffee and my Ko-Fi. Uh, that's a tip jar. Just like the money I make through Twitch, uh, the eventual money I'll make on YouTube because I'm getting so close to that $100. Um those are ways to support me. All that money goes back into buying kits or buying equipment. Like I mentioned it, I bought uh, with some money from Twitch. I bought this wireless keyboard. It's got a little USB dongle and it comes with this little wireless mouse. And uh, all I have to do is press a button to put it when it goes to sleep. This is way easier than what I was doing, which was the un running cables and running my my mouse and my other keyboard, my good keyboard and running that. These I'm just like, they're battery powered. I pull the USB out, stick it in there, throw it in a drawer, and then pull it back out when it's time to stream. So it could not be easier. Uh, uh, I'm very happy with, with that setup. But that came out of the money I made uh, from streaming. 
Um, which, you know, that's just another way to do it. Uh, I also have my Discord. I'd like to mention the Discord, um, in the Build with Bear community, uh, Discord. I, um, I hope people will join it. Uh, it, you know, post your photos of stuff you're doing. You can always tweet me photos of things that you're working on, but you can also post them there. Uh, it's kind of cool to see what people are working on. So that's that. I think I've said it all. Um, uh, I'm going to drink a water and then we'll get back to building and I'll talk about um, uh, Dragon Ball Z video games. Ah. Pleasant water. Um, I posted a series of videos on your Discord. Yes, you did, Mr. Bob. I appreciate that. Yeah, um... Uh, Johnny, aka Smash Mouth, on here has posted a bunch of photos of his of his uh, place and and the work that he's put in along with his girlfriend to um, to build that space up uh, for for building and stuff like that. Uh, but also like Twisted, uh, who is in chat uh, on occasion, not tonight. Um, uh, Twisted just sends me tweets. I've been retweeting them. I always retweet. If you're working on, like, you're painting minifigs. You know, there was a guy early on last year um, that worked on, like, um, making parchment look old. He worked on that stuff. And so I was like, yeah, send me that. Uh, my usual work is all NDA. Yeah, Mr. Bob, I mean, it is cool to be able to, to showcase that stuff. Like, obviously, like, I, um, my landlord, I, I said, I think I said this on Thursday, my landlord was in my apartment this week and hasn't been there in a while, um, and was very interested in checking out, um, uh, what the heck is going on here? Okay, we're working on the waste units. Let me, let me put some stuff together there. G, we're gonna need some G. Uh, was like checking out the Millennium Falcon that I have in the living room, and I don't have other things on display. I still haven't taken photos of, um... Uh, Gagai, our bear. I still need to take photos of that because I had to be right back and I didn't uh, use the bear because I haven't taken photos yet. I think I'm going to do that tonight. I think I'll be after the stream. Um, sometimes when I'm done streaming, I rush out of here to go get pizza to get a late night slice. But I don't think I'll do that tonight. Instead, tonight maybe I'll take some photos of Gagai, Petite Gagai. Uh, the bear that we built on stream. And uh, maybe I could, yeah, take some photos of that. And be ready for that. Um, oh, okay. Now I get it. All right. I get what's going on here. G47, G46. Okay. Um, yeah, I like sharing photos uh, and sharing what I'm doing here. And I, I don't have a lot of stuff displayed in my apartment because... People don't come by. Um, the video, if you go to my YouTube and you go to the latest uh, Bill Bear uh, mailbag video, I don't remember the number. It might be 12, but I don't remember. I apologize for not remembering. Um, the video where I show this kit off. I also uh, have some video of my wall of kits. Um, stuff that, I, you know, it's coming up down the pipe. Stuff that I have built that are all in boxes. Some stuff that I'm, and I've been thinking about displaying a few of the kits that I'm not going to give away. Like, uh, if it's a death scythe, it stays with me. Uh, so I might put a couple of my death scythes up uh, for display. Perfect Gundam. That's a. I have a long-term goal with the Perfect Gundam because people that remember the um, the Wing Zero Perfect Grade that I did, um, people might remember that I, I did that uh, on stream. I had broke a piece while I was building and kind and did a repair job that it was good, but it wasn't great. And I've always thought about, um, doing a series where I, uh, work on that. Um, I have said this before that I have a, uh, a cardboard paper crafts, uh, idea in mind that I'm going to do in October, um, for November for a thing that I'm doing in November. I'm going to spend part of October building that, um, uh, perfect girl. Not perfect. That you doing some paper craft for that. I have an idea that I think is going to be pretty cool. Um, it's an original thing, and it'll be the first thing I ever build on stream. It's original. It'll be like I'll have a, a little bit of a template to work with, but for the most part, it'll just be a design that I've 
come up with myself and building that and that's like very exciting like i kind of want to just do that now but or start it sooner or later but i have to get materials that's something where like i need it like i'm going to work with cardboard i need an exacto knife i don't own an exacto knife i should put i should get a kit and put that on uh, my wish list see if anybody wants to pick that up um but i should have an exacto knife it would be it would be good to have Um, but yeah, if you got any projects working on, I always say that, like always send me tweets if you're working on something. I, I like seeing that. Or you can also, I've got my discord now so people can post, uh, there's the forum in there for the sub forum for posting what you're working on. There's the sub forum for posting your, uh, um, promoting yourself and your streams, you know, Harold posts, uh, links to his streams when he's doing stuff, um, which is cool. Johnny does as well aka uh, Smash Mouth, um, does that as well. And, you know, some people just are in there. And they get reminded when I'm going to stream, because I post that I'm streaming. All right, so we're working on the waste here. we got some pieces we're putting in. Moving along. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that, Nick. Uh, thank you for saying that. Uh, thanks for dropping by. Uh, you know, stick around if you'd like. You're more than welcome to. But, you know, if you got to go, you got to go. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I try. <laughs> I, and, I, and I will endeavor to continue to rock. Um, let me see. Uh... I don't think I want to do that. So, all right. So, we're pulling this thing out here. I remember these kind of pieces. The waste is probably my least favorite part of any kit. Um, because, especially on a 144 scale, I don't enjoy um, all of the little pieces you have to attach to all this. And the, the skirt parts. I just never liked it. I don't know if I ever will. I'm just, just not... It's my least favorite part of, of any kit building is doing that. So who knows? Maybe this one will, be, will feel different, but I doubt it. All right, let's go close. That's, that's, it's got to go like that. Shut this open. And just making sure that I'm putting this on the right way. Oops. So I got to put this on here really tight and then bend it back so this lives on like that. All right, I think that's right. There will be a gap. Okay, there is a gap. Thank you for telling me that there will be. I appreciate that it says in there there will be a gap because I was like, why is there a gap? And I guess there is one. Uh, I really like the color of the spur. Uh, yeah, there's some great colors on this kit. Uh, I'm not I'm not mad at it. Uh, I think there's some very nice coloring here. It's a good looking kit. I'm excited to build it. It's got this like deep deep black and some deep deep um, blue it's very good oh uh, I kind of mentioned that how um, my five dollar patreon uh, supporters get videos early I do want to say I don't often talk about my Monday uh, what goes out on Monday so obviously I'm doing a, boat, a build stream on Monday because I uh, need to I want to stream next week not that I need you I want to stream next week and can't my normal time so i'm doing that but uh normally I, what happens on mondays is and we'll still happen this monday is i put out a video every monday um uh in a series called let pat play it is a let's play series where i give myself permission to play a game because i'm filming it and putting it on youtube um past three episodes i have looked at um 
uh, Giant ROM games uh, for the Giant ROM 5, which is a uh, game jam focused on Giant Bomb, and this year the 10-year the anniversary of Giant Bomb. I was very happy to look at a bunch of videos for that, but this is different. This is actually an application that is for iOS and Android, but also got released on um, on Itch that I uh, I played. I'm not going to say what it is, but I'm going to say some of y'all are going to be real into it. It's a pretty cool little app. Um, I, I think I call it a game as much as I call it an app, but it's really an app. Uh, and it was a lot of fun to check out. So that'll go up on Monday, but my... Patreon supporters, $5 or $10. We'll see you tomorrow, which is a little extra thing I do. Sometimes I don't have time to do that and give them the bonus, but I try to. All right. Okay. That goes on there. That goes like that. Just keep working on this waste. Fit tight, fit tight the parts, tightly fit the parts as far as they go. Ugh, hate it. Hate doing these. I hate doing these pieces. Uh, a, D, and E. I need A, D, and E. Like I said, this is my least favorite part of any kit is, uh, is the waist for a Gundam, a Gundam waist. I'll do it because I got to build the whole kit, obviously, but I'm never super excited about this part. I wish we were working on the arms right now. Oh, uh, so E21 and E20. Yeah, I wish we were working on uh, the uh, the arms. So we instead of doing the waist that they jump or the chest, the head. The head's going to be some small pieces, but I don't mind that. But working on the waist is not is my least favorite part. It just is. Uh, A34. Uh, I made a couple announcements about uh, my panels at PAX. Um, I've got a Friday night panel at 8.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, which will feature um, a whole mess of people. It's the improvised post-mortem panel. Um, newly added, joining the team uh, team with uh, Abby Russell is Ben Pack. Ben Pack is now on Abby Russell's team. And Chris Straub has recruited for his team, Kate Welch. And one year ago, they performed together. Uh, so it's fun to have Kate back. Um, Kate is also very busy. So, um, because she has, she now works for, uh, Wizards of the Coast and also has C-Team stuff. So she's very busy and it's hard to get her to be able to do stuff. So I'm very excited that she has made time, uh, to do our panel. She's going to be real good. She was real good last year. So, and Ben is awesome and very funny and Ben and Abby together are great. Yes. Kate, Kate and Chris, like... Also, Kate and Chris were the only people that, like, did it as characters, which um, I so I have done this panel, uh, Improvised Postmortem, where uh, for those that have not seen it before, it's it's good. It's a good one um, uh, where we play where I bring up people as if they are uh, game designers that have made a game and they're doing a small five minute or less uh uh, postmortem on the game and then the joke fun part is they don't know the name of the game until they get on stage um so kate and chris have this whole thing this whole universe of like a fake bad company that has made uh that is like forever in kickstarter raising funds like they have like a terrible company joke thing that they did that they do so they incorporated that into um and all the the lore of that into the show, which was cool. No one else has done that. Uh, when I did uh, Impress Postmortem in New York, uh, almost everyone played a character. And then the usually it's a very it, usually when we do it at PAX, 
It's just people playing a variation of themselves, which makes total sense. I totally understand that. Um, totally get that. Totally understand it. Uh, why people would be less interested in doing uh, like a character like to, to why people would be like, oh, I want to I want to do this as a character and not like themselves or why people are the other way around. You know, when I did it in New York, it was a comedy theater. Like when I do it here, mo almost everyone who does it is not a comedian. Uh, I mean, Abby certainly is. Uh, Casey Malone, who did PAX East, is certainly, obviously, a comedian. Um, uh, that's that's his thing. So, yeah, so it, it's, like, interesting to look at people um, who are not, who don't consider themselves comedy folks doing that show. And how most of them are just, like, playing a variation of themselves. I find that stuff fascinating. I always do an example set and I never I never go too weird with the example set because I am trying to make the show make the show make sense for audience members that haven't seen it before. Uh, I like when people play the character of a stereotype they deal with on daily basis. Oh, Mr. Bob, that's yeah. I really do appreciate where like game devs get a chance to kind of vent. Um, the best venting ever is Aaron Trites. Uh, he did not set out to do it, but as he was doing it, it was him. It was very clearly Aaron's set was very cathartic for Aaron. Um, but yeah, it's like a lot of times it's people doing things that uh, based on people they can't stand anymore or the kind of people they're tired of working with or whatever. It's very clear that we are that that show for for game devs is therapeutic. And for, and for games journalists, I think it's fun to, like, put themselves in the position of being a bad or good game designer. Because also, I'll say this. Most people go the negative route, which is fine. So when the lightning round happens, I, I really love doing uh, a positive thing in the lightning round. Being like, we sold a million copies. We did everything we, we set out to do. I really like doing that because uh, so many people focus on the negative. It's fun to, be like, be cocky and positive. Like, we sold 3 million copies. Um, uh, scoping a single day for Outlook Fest. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Bob, there was definitely a part where Aaron said, like, we're reaching out to the community to help fix our bugs or whatever. And it was, like, a bit of an indictment on a certain company that will not be named and how perhaps they uh, used a lot, uh, hired... Uh, social media people out of the community who were probably not ready for the job and perhaps had no qualifications other than really liking the company and the game and then therefore maybe b being young and maybe not realizing how little they were being paid. I don't know what company I'm talking about right now because I am not liable for anything I'm saying at the moment. But one could imagine a company existing that would do something like that, where they hired their, when all their senior community people left for other companies, they restaffed with people from the community who were not ready for the, that kind of a job. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. Uh, but yeah, it's a fun panel. That's on Friday night. I'm excited to have Ben do it. Uh, oh, so the people that everyone is sleeping on are AD and Liz. AD and Liz. I should AD, not AD. I know it's going to AD, but it's AD. AD and Liz made um, a wonderful board game that involves some tabletop game that involves some improv uh, called Someone Has Died. I've talked about that game a lot. I really like it. We became friends because I really like their game. Um... So I, uh, so I'm happy to, to promote it, but they are incredibly funny and, uh, nobody knows anything about them in our world. Uh, I think the only way you know anything about them is if you're so obsessed with our world that you listen to Trin's 
podcast for Kickstarter games uh, where they put together Kickstarter people, someone who has created a Kickstarter successfully and someone that's currently has one up. There's only like been like three episodes, I think. The second episode features Liz. So I think you'd have to be really like gung-ho on podcasts and people in our world to know anything about what I'm talking about. But um, it is, uh, so let's see, we need E17. Uh, but anyway, they are, they are going to be real good. And uh, I think people don't know it yet that they're going to love those two. Because uh, I think they are incredible uh, performers and comedians. Very funny, cool people. So I'm excited to have them uh, on the panel so people can learn who they are. It's one of my favorite things about. Uh, same thing with, um, uh, with doing League of Heels. There are some people that are doing the Quiplash game that maybe you're not going to get so, so much of their personality uh, because... You know, it, it's a quiplash game, and they're not going to all be mic'd the whole time. But, like, uh, Coco, uh, Kaka Beware, Khalif, uh, Adam's rules, Khalif rules. So you get to see Khalif uh, be awesome and learn more about him. I'm excited for for, fa for folks to check, that, check him out, learn more about what a cool dude that guy is. Um, is that an E17? I'm going to make sure I grabbed the right one. E. Okay, it is. All right. Um, but uh, my friend Alex is fucking incredible. A wonderful, funny, weird, cool person. I'm excited for people to uh, to get uh, to know Alex. Um, right, A31. That's what I need. It's A31. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of people that I'm excited for folks to check out. That's one of my favorite parts about doing any of these shows is in the same way for me, my the very first PAX Rumble. When I walked into the very first PAX Rumble, I knew a few people. I knew the Giant Bomb people kind of well. I knew all the Harmonics people. I didn't know a lot of folks. And then um, Pope was just like pointed at Samantha and Felix who were talking to one another and introduced me and was like, you got, y'all should sit together y'all like each other and those are people that I really care about and uh, love spending time with and I was so psyched because Pope was just like yeah I think this would be good uh, I'm so grateful for him for that because they are important people in my life and so it's it rules that uh, I met them through a dumb thing and now I get to do that now I could be like Hey, you've chatted on this thing, but have you met in person? And hey, what if what if you two talked? That would be cool. Like I get to do that for for people, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, like I want to make sure that Alex and Erica meet because I think they would really hit it off. And I think they have a lot in common and would be real into what each other's doing on the internet. I think particularly if Alex doesn't know how great an artist and cool a person Erica is, I got to make sure. And there's somebody like Jan who like, you know, is in a position and knows people, but like doesn't know a lot of stuff and isn't you know necessarily invited to a lot of stuff. Like I'm psyched that I get to... Uh, encourage him to be part of the shenanigans and to like be a part of our silliness. Very excited about that. All right. Got to do one more of these things. Let's get back into it. I should have been snipping these pieces as I went. I should have done both at the same time. I didn't. So now I got to go back and do it all over again. Find all the pieces I need. Uh... G, 43. At least I know what they look like. Uh, Jan is such a cool dude. Yeah, I, he and I haven't spent much time, uh, but um, I knew that he'd be really into it. Uh, Harris Foster's another person. Harris Foster, I have never met Harris in person. I only know Harris from the internet. 
Harris wore a Run GFB shirt to the uh, Overwatch League stuff um, and works for a company that I really admire and like and people I know have very good things to say about them. So that's good enough for me, but that's somebody I don't know and I'm excited to know more and I think our fans will be excited to know more too. So like, yeah, all right, sounds good. Um, and yeah, if we can shout out Tanya's stuff, I think that's going to be really good. Um, Tanya does incredible work uh, in gaming for marginalized groups, um, particularly African Americans and women, um, uh, and is a very good force for change in the world. I Need Diverse Games is the uh, coalition that she started. I think coalition is a good word for that. Um, and I think that uh, she does fantastic work in that space. And if I can tell people to go that are there to like go to the diversity lounge and see what she's doing and talk to her and ask how people can help, like I'm all for that. Um, Cause uh, she rules. So I'm glad that she's involved. Uh, he did not follow through on making the whole GB panel planning Panning transition shots. Shots. Ha. Uh, no. Uh, I feel like he's got to, you know, to do something silly like that, he's got to be around for a little longer before he can start being like, hey, I got this stupid idea. What if we did this? You can't open with that kind of goofiness. There are a lot of sheets for this kit. I'm going to say that right now. A lot of sheets for this. It's fine. There's just a lot of them. All right. So this goes. Let's put this on this. We just did this, so I shouldn't fuck this up. But we'll see if I do. Um, one thing I'm going to watch tonight is. Uh, no, Mr. Bob, he certainly is. But, you know, he's picking his moments. He's not, you know. Um, one thing I'm excited about watching uh, tonight is uh, out of uh, Gamescom, there is uh, quite a bit of Hitman 2 footage. Um, just one map, uh, but uh, one of the streamers I watch who... I, I, I feel weird about recommending. I won't say his name um, because he's a little aggressive uh, in his language and sometimes is a bit offensive in his language um, but is a enter often entertaining presence on the internet so I'm not not really psyched about promoting him anyway so I won't say his name but he just put up some videos uh, of hitman 2 he's one of the people invited to go and uh, play the game because he has a internet following so um, I've got two videos of those to watch tonight, so check that out. Then maybe I'll watch some Dragon Ball or Yu Hakusho. All right, we finished the waist. We're going to put the legs on, and then we're going to put the, uh, I don't know what they call, little things on the side. Um, make sure that we're doing this right. Yes, this is that. That's the back. Obviously, put this in there. Uh, I understand, Road. If you want it fresh, uh, yeah. Um, I understand. You know, like some people don't are like, yeah, they're like, hey, I, hey, was I ever good at Hitman? No. Did I eventually stop playing Hitman and just focus on watching people play Hitman? Yes. So, like, I hear you. But I'm also very interested in some of the stuff that's up. And also some of the things that are, like, old school Hitman. Like the um, sniper rifle in a briefcase that you can you can put back in the briefcase and, like, conceal by just walking around with a briefcase. Like, that is an old school Hitman thing that I'm very excited exists is going to be existing in this uh, version of the game that's like a cool thing that people have been asking for so I'm kind of psyched that they're like oh no it's in there all right so this back piece I feel like this back piece is probably gonna pop off all the dang time try to put it on there 
I hate these things so much. Oh, and I put this on wrong. Did I? Wait. Did I? Yes, I did put these on wrong. I put the legs on the wrong way. But luckily, noticed it now and not later. Can't do anything about it. Makes sense that I would mess this up. But yes, this skirt pieces are always shorter in the front than they are in the back. Because you need to allow for more movement by doing it that way. Dang it. All right, let me put these legs on the right way. Good evening, hello, and welcome. Thanks for popping in uh, to the chat. We are uh, working on this Unigra Gundam, uh, which is the uh, the Norn. It's the full title of this stupid thing. Uh, the Banshee Norn. We're doing the Banshee Norn. This is the real grade kit. Uh, excited to be building it. Um, yes. So let's put that on there. Oop. And the leg came up. So we got to put that back on. All right. And then we just have two more little pieces and then we'll be done with this half and we can move on to the chest. The chest is next. So let's get that going I can already tell what's going to be annoying about this kit and it is the connection between the legs and the leg joint it's already being annoying uh, that is I think the biggest thing about the real grade there's something interesting there's very interesting pieces to the real grades but overall they are often very annoying this leg just doesn't want to stay on. That's annoying. All right, let's get these other pieces on and move on from there. H and A, and then F, and then D. We're really building this together. H, A, F, and D. Uh, the only thing that bumps me about him at two is that being all one game means Dan and Brad might not record them playing every level. Uh, they did. Um, they did it, I think, once. Uh... I don't know. They, I think they like doing West Coast. They, li they like doing cross stuff. It is a hard scheduling thing. But I think they do like it. And something for Hitman, like... Uh, I feel like they would go out of their way to make sure that they have a chance to do some Hitman stuff together. Because people would be invested in it and interested in it. And then as long as they want to do it. Like, that's obviously... To me, that's the, always the most important thing. With any content that... Uh, Giant Bomb does, who I still really enjoy watching their content. I just want them to like what they're working on. Because if they like it, then then it's fun. It's way more fun. If they're not into it, or if they don't like enjoy not liking it, like something like Mario Sunshine, where they were enjoyed hating the process, like it's not fun. Or, or Mario Party Party, where like there's a lot, there's a lot of fun in not liking what's going on. But if they really don't like the game, that could be tough. Or the experience of playing the game. If they're not enjoying that, then I'm not really enjoying it either. All right, when A, H, F, and D. I'm going to cough. Hold on. <coughs> hmm. uh, I felt like the Zipman vids did well enough. Yeah. They certainly have done. But uh, I think what um, uh, Rode was saying is that, that like... Uh, because it's all uh, uh, one game instead of episodic, they might not film every level as like a series or like whereas they filmed everything that came out when it came out. And so he's uh, I assume that you're just like a little worried that they might not focus so much on it. But it did also do very well um, and people did enjoy it. Uh, Actually, um, this is a, a fun, weird little thing. The person who I didn't quite want to uh, mention, there are a couple of um, Hitman challenges or like custom uh, challenges that you can put in. There have been a few people that have played 
uh, ones that were built for Giant Bomb or based on Giant Bomb stuff. I think Vinny linked to a, a, a kind of known streamer, a pretty big streamer doing that. But I've also seen a couple other Hitman streamers play things based on Giant Bomb. Uh, or one of whom was like, oh, I think I know what this is about and kind of understood what was going on. And the other had no idea what, what he was like. Oh, I don't know. I don't know who those people are because it was just like outside of his knowledge. So, yeah, because like people in the chat were like, uh, oh, it's based on this thing. They do a bad job. And he was like, oh, OK. Cool. Uh -huh. Oops. Can't tell. Okay. All right. And then I need to put F5. Yeah, I could see them like breaking it up and doing a longer thing. But then also, like you're saying, when you're cross country, then that's scheduling time where both of it works for both people, where it's late enough in the day so it's not too early or not too late in the day so it's not too late and all that and you know you gotta get people together and if you're just gonna like skype in you know you're gonna record in the west coast and just skype dan's voice in and then share screens with him it's like it's not as easy as it as it's not easy at all there's nothing easy about about doing that and then if you add in the idea of doing it every week, that could become quite the uh, endeavor or monthly or whatever they do. Yeah. They did cross PUBG as well. Um, but that like, that's also like a live game where everyone is just live and you're kind of picking who you follow. Um, this just is like, an. it's one of those things where like, I don't like, you know, I'm not putting words in people's mouths, but like, it's a lot. That's a lot of work. Maybe that, you know, maybe they're talking about it. Maybe they're not. I don't know. But I just know that what we're, what we're asking of them is a lot. Uh, oh, F, D, I didn't do H. That's what I got to do is H. Yeah. But who knows? I mean, it will make for good content that people will be into. So who knows? Maybe they can figure out an easy way to do it. Yeah. And that's also the thing. Like I said, I want them to work on stuff. I want everyone out there, uh, when you do stuff like that, to just to work on things that you like and projects you like. Because uh, wasting your time with something you're not into is a huge bummer. All right. So this goes like this. Nope. Okay, I'm going to cough again. Sorry. <coughs> mm. Apologies. Uh, okay, so that goes like that. These little pieces are weird. I'm trying to figure them out. And this goes like that. Okay, and then this goes like that. Great. These interlocking pieces this didn't need to be this, it didn't need to be this complicated. Bandai. That's really complicated for what is just a thing on the side, but whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, I, I'm not saying they can't do that, those kind of things, but I'm saying that, like, I try not to, you know, I try to give them a lot of slack and benefit of the doubt when it comes to those things, because, like, things just go, just go wonky sometimes and wrong. Um, it's tough. Um, very rare. The nice thing about me is 
obviously I run things very light here. My biggest issue is sometimes just the lighting is off and I can't figure out how to fix it right. And my green screen doesn't look good. That is like my biggest problem that I face doing this. So if that's going to be my biggest problem, I'll, I'll gladly accept it. Or like on occasion, uh, my, my, you know, there was a the period where like, uh, I was dropping frames cause I had to, my, um, bit rate was too hot. So I dropped my bit rate down, um, you know, stuff like that. Like I'm okay with that. If that's, if those are my problems, if those are problems I face, like that's good for me. Tomorrow I have to shoot a, uh, another, uh, Let's play video or my, my let Pat play uh, series because I am going to be uh, not this Monday, obviously, but the following Monday, I'll still be at um, Seattle and I don't want to record something and then upload it there. That doesn't make any sense. So I can do it early, which is good. I didn't have time today because my walk ended up being longer than I originally planned, but it was still a good walk. So I'm not mad about it. But yeah, I'll just have time tomorrow before I go to work. Bang out a video. I know what I'm going to shoot, so just got to do it. That's the nice thing is when I know. Sometimes I don't know. You know, the prep work I was doing. Oh, there's, so there's our waste. It's done. I'm glad it's done. I hope none of this falls apart. Um, uh, but uh, what was I was going to say, oh, yeah. Um, sometimes I don't know. Like when I was doing the game jam stuff. I wouldn't, I, uh, I usually had like one and then I would like have to find the other one because I would look at two games and then I would find out what games didn't work and people were like, oh, you should play this one. And I'm like, I don't, I can't get it to run. I don't know why. So the nice thing is I already know what game I'm going to look at and I just have to look at it, show off some parts of it. And then I can pack my controller for packs. The more I build the G armor, the more I'm glad they cut it out of canon. This is just stupid. Yup. I hear you, Mr. Bob. I understand what you're saying. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, so this is the front. This goes to the back. All right. Goes like that. So we're working on our chest now. We got these, some of these, the weird things that happen here. The B stuff. Um, more G. We're building our shoulders right now and our chest. This is our, the beginning of our chest piece here. We'll do it for a little while. Uh, I'll end in a little bit, uh, but I did want to at least finish the waist and then we can start on our chest. And obviously we've got more building here. I don't expect to be done on Monday. Uh, Say what you want about these small kits, but they're dense. They're 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 small but dense, so I don't mind that. Uh, but yeah, we will be able to uh, keep working on this on Monday, and then we'll finish it up probably after we get I get back. I got a couple more minutes though. I'll do a little bit more work. Do, 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 do. And then this will then fold in like that. Hmm. Goes back. And then goes. I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out. There it is. Goes like that. Okay. Now I got it. Sorry about that. Took a second to figure out how they wanted that and then a120 um i116 so g a20 hello smash mouth uh how's it going um welcome we're about towards the end of the stream but happy you're here always happy to see you uh thanks for stopping in uh, do a list of anywhere the panels you'll be at packs. Uh, you know what? I 
I've been promoting them. Uh, if you go to my Twitter account and look at the media, you'll see images of the different shows I'm doing there. Uh, what I'll do is I'm uh, this actually I was going to do this next week, but I'll do it probably tonight. My Twitter account, I will make my pin tweet at some point tonight. Um, just like information about what my panels are because I am on three panels and doing a fourth panel. I'm doing Let's Rank It, uh, Dave Lang's panel. Um, uh, kind of last minute addition to that. I've known for a little while that I was doing it, but wasn't something that I thought what I was doing before um, the schedule got announced. So yeah, I'm going to put something up uh, and I apologize that I haven't uh, done so yet. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, uh, basically 8.30 p.m. on Friday and Saturday night, um, Pacific time, I will be streaming on PAX 2 for the two panels I'm on there. My Sunday uh, panel and my Friday panel, my Friday or Saturday afternoon panel, um, those two will not be streamed, unfortunately. Um, let's rank it and uh, Bill Gubert. But Bill Gubert, uh Lego Challenge will be... Um, uh, record it. I'm recording it. So it'll eventually be up on YouTube. It just won't be there. Um, and there'll be VODs of those as well. So, um, uh, you'll be able to find the, the, the on-demand of the Saturday panel, um, the wrestling panel, um, the, uh, uh, and then I will also, I'm going to rip the, uh, Twitch stream of Improvised Postmortem and put it on my YouTube. I always do that. Uh, yes, yeah, much I appreciate you popping in. Um, a reminder to folks, uh, this is, uh, we're wrapping up the stream here. My next stream, uh, I'm going to do on Monday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so this coming Monday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., I will be streaming uh, so that I can do a build stream before I go away. I'm doing something on Wednesday. I will host it on this stream, but I am not. Uh, I'm not streaming uh, build stream from my apartment on Wednesday. Can't say what it is, but it's a cool New York thing uh, on Wednesday. Um, so I hope people will come check that out. Uh, but yeah, well, I'm going to wrap up the build here. Um, yeah, so uh, my Friday stream it will be that and all that. Uh, can't find video, but thankful was bad though. Uh, oh, Lashbrook's talking about that, the Gundam stuff. Um, all right, I'm going to wrap up here. I want to thank you all for joining me. I hope you have a great evening. Um, we got, this is looking like a real kit here. The legs look great. Uh, the Banshee Norn. Um, and, uh, on Monday, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time, I will be back again here. So that's two days away from another, uh, build stream. And then I will do some kind of video probably Friday night at, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. I will do a video check-in from the booth as people kind of like wander out of the show floor uh, and kind of wind things down before uh, my panel. Uh, I'm hopefully going to do a check-in then. But uh, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your uh, uh, Saturday, and I'll, I'll see you soon. Uh, bye, all. <laughs> and my mouse fell asleep. So, and I need a second to turn it off.